war rages across the mortal realms. New alliances are formed while others lie shattered, and the dominant powers ever seek their next conquest. As these two powerful forces prepare to clash, one fact is becoming clear. The season of war has begun. This battle is brought to you by our channel members and FLGS partners, Warpfire Minis and X-Planet. We'd also like to give a big shout out to Baron of Dice for their support of the channel. We've long been fans of their incredible designs and have even ordered custom dice ourselves, so we're super excited to get to showcase their awesome work. Hello and welcome to Season of War! Tonight we are excited to bring you another game of Age of Sigmar. Mike, happy to have you all back on the channel. It's been a little bit, so excited for the game. And you're uh, bringing an army not new to you, but a channel debut of having the big wall. Um, I, yeah, exactly that. First channel appearance. Yeah, thank you. Um, pleasure to be back. Um, I love big wall. It's fun. Yeah. Uh, I've been playing it for a while for myself. Um, and then I got back into it a little bit recently was this uh, GHB um, and it turns out they score really really well a couple a couple uh, of good battle tactics yeah. makes a big difference yeah once you get free ones they give you those pity tactics and next thing you know you're it's like oh okay I'll just stand near train but um no big wall are great I'm having a lot of fun with some uh, I've been trying a little bit different builds than what you usually see most people either have the mock crusher yeah. or the mega boss and the, the pigs and a lot more iron jaw stuff um, I'm trying to run a more 50-50. I got a lot of Cruel Boy units. I got the Monster Killers in here and the Sludge Raker, which uh, I don't see many people take the Sludge Raker yeah. in the Big Wall, but I've been having fun with some. Uh, Sludge Raker makes Gut Ripper's a uh, liability to fight uh, once they roll a couple sixes and your opponent's mm -hmm. uh, get scared when all of a sudden you tell them take eight mortal. <laughs> yeah, oh, for sure. <laughs> But then today uh, we're doing battle on the mission. Every step is forward, so we got four objectives on the table. It's hold one, hold two, hold more storing. Mm -hmm. uh, the twist with this one is if you're charging or on the charge, your models count as an additional body yes. each. Not as big for me as it is for you, because I'm low It numbers. means I might actually be able to take an objective yes. from you. Yes, it's <laughs> If true. I throw enough guys yeah. at you. And then if you retreat off of, out of combat, you don't count for any bodies on objectives, yes. which is, Again, maybe not the best thing for Guardians, where they like to kind of just stay alive and... I mean, they hit too, but they like to just kind of be there. Like you said, yeah. there's a lot of bodies, so... That'll be interesting to see how it plays out today. Um, but Mike, you were talking to us a little bit about your list already. Do you want to take us through the rest of it? Yeah, so um, my list I'm running today, I have um, my 10 Brutes with um, Gore Hackas, just because it's better. I have two units of six Ragers and I actually opted to mix the weapons in the Ragers. Mm -hmm. Most people go with all the, the hackers. I went with some chains and some hackers. I also have the, the monster killers here. They offer a lot of utility. They're fairly cheap for what they are. They're 135 points. So I always kind of like want to take one unit of them. So I got um, two of 20 gut rippers, some hobgrots I threw in the corner with super sneaky. Um, I got my, my Slow Draker, as I was mentioning earlier. Um, so I have Fasten on him. Um, he's my general, and I took Super Sneaky. I have the Morksai Pebble. Yep. And then I got everyone's favorite Homelander over here, War God Prophet mm -hmm. with uh, Glowing Tattoos. Two War Chanters with uh, Get em Beat. And um, I got the Little Shaman with um, Choking Mist. I have him, and then I have Horfrost on my War God Prophet. A little bit different than what you usually see. Most people take pigs and or just all the rages yeah. in the world. Yeah, I've been having a lot of fun with this, and how about your army? <laughs> awesome, yeah, well then, uh, for the Sons of Bayamat, I am playing Kane Broad Stomp again. Um, we actually showed out uh, to Warpfire Minis. We got three of their uh, used uh, Man Crusher Gardens from them. Came painted nicely, so <laughs> Perfect for the table, they, they're ready to go. <laughs> so I'm pulling them out right now. So big thanks to Warpfire. And in addition to the Man Crushers then, I have uh, two Gate Breakers here, one of which is my General. He's got the um, Amulet of Destiny for the Sets Up Ward. He's got Big Eater as a command trait so that my Guardians can kind of heal themselves mm -hmm. up as they kill models, uh, if they're holier within 12 of him. And then King Broad, obviously the kind of namesake uh, who's super tanky in this. Uh, the sub-faction gives me some great abilities like destroying terrain and chucking it across the table and um, the five aboard on King Broad and, and uh, a cool monsters action as well. So lots of cool tricks in this one and it's seen some like decent competitive play and like mm -hmm. had some success. So I'm excited to try to give it another run. Yeah, I haven't played against 
uh, sons in a while, and they they've always been like a fun army to play against yes. in time. Often so, the same as it works, right? That, like, that one beginning of uh, AOS 3 when it was like, oh look, I just win. Yes, they were too <laughs> good. But um, we got all the structure on the table, so we're gonna have fun no matter what. Mike, I did out drop you here. As you said, you had a bunch of extra enhancements. So I was just a three drop here tonight. So gives me choice. And Are you sure three is lower than 11? It, pretty sure. <laughs> okay. Uh, we'll double check with Jada, <laughs> but uh, pretty sure to no one's surprise, Mike, I did have your first turn and we'll jump into Big Wah turn one. As the battle commences, the Oryx generate five Wah points and use Ear We Go, Ear We Go to generate one more. I'm gonna go with um, Magical uh, Domination for my battle tactic. And on to your starting here phase. I'll go for just a heroic leadership uh, with King Broad. And I did it. The Swamp Kala Shaman gives his poison to the unit of Gut Rippers so they deal mortals on five ups, then also casts Mystic Shield on the Snatcher boss. I gotta give out Delicious Violent Fury. One on the Brutes, and one on this unit of Ragers over here. I will cast Horfrost, which goes off nice. with a 11. Claiming two objectives and poised to take the Gargans head on, the Big Wah complete their battle tactic and score five points. So, um, simple turn. To move up, jockey. I wanted my whole army within the 12 inch aura yeah. of the, for the Mork's Eye Pebble and for the Poison buff. I did have to move up. Um, my plan is to still stay fairly tight with my castling. So that way, when Jordan gets into me, I at least get multiple units being pulled in. Yep. It'll spike my WA points up, as well as you can only activate so many times. <laughs> yes, fantastic. And you, you, again, you spread out your unit to put your debuff across the, the yes. field. So I have essentially up to here for the threat range. So you kind of have to hit me over here, the edges. which is, actually good for me uh, because then it means he's not coming close to my other stuff so if he wants to commit in here he has to hope I don't roll a three up yeah it definitely doesn't make it appetizing did everything you needed to do scoring wise so yeah it's a uh, big was an interest army I'm gonna stand around for a couple turns yes that's true because I kind of want to do the same thing but I think you're you have the tactic advantage I think so yeah. I have to be smart about what I do there but yeah, I guess that's it, Mike. And we'll jump into Sons of Bayamat, turn one. The Sons of Behemoth ready themselves for battle, choosing surround and destroy as their battle tactic. Auto for heroic leadership with King Broad. He fails it. Uh, I'm gonna try to get more wild points. I go one more. Without much to do in the hero phase, King Broad chants for Shatter the Mountains, granting two inches of extra movement to the Gargants. One Man Crusher uses At the Double to push the edge of the Northeastern objective, helping to secure the Sun's battle tactic. The Gate Breaker is gonna smash in all the bits. I am destroying this terrain piece. So D6 attacks for three. He'll use all out attack. I just got all defense the brutes, so yep. I will spend a command point for that. Sounds good. So I'll be on threes and threes, two hits, nothing. Then he'll just do his normal throwing. Uh, threes, twos. Nope. Okay, this guy's gonna hurl his boulder. Uh, twos, yes. While the Gut Rippers use Inspiring Presence, the Sons of Behemoth are left fuming, having failed to connect with their hurled terrain. Well, turn one for the Sons of Behemoth wasn't 
much more exciting, but a little bit more exciting because we threw some rocks and some boulder and some terrain that I actually have to remove. Uh, get get even, that out of there, it's even gone. Even though it didn't go far. Um, <laughs> it's too big. It was too big and uh, he missed with, with throwing that terrain piece. He missed with um, his the hurled boulder, but then I, I did connect and kill two dot rippers. Yeah. So first blood, uh, we'll take that claim to fame. I almost screwed myself over at the start of the turn and game. <laughs> um, I went for the battle tactic of try and destroy. I positioned my man crusher here and another one here so that they could go get those two board edges outside of my territory with the intent of having this guy over yeah. here. What I didn't realize, again, not, it's the first time I've run man crushers in a long time, forgot their movement eight. I was thinking they were, they were faster than that. Yeah. So I actually had to use King, King Broad's prayer to give me the extra movement to actually make that possible. So that was very close to not happening. Thought I was being smart, playing ahead for my battle tactics. Didn't double check my movement characteristics. So uh, King Broad coming up in with the prayer, at least to save my butt. Got the man crushers on one side of the board, the big guys on the other. I have a feeling it's gonna be one of those games where we just jockey for three turns and then whatever you know, happens, happens. <laughs> that's the thing, Ro, for, for me, you have a lot of damage. So anytime you go in, if you can counter punch with the rest of your army then, I'm gonna lose whatever I throw mm -hmm. in. You can store battle tactics really well, so potentially if we do the stalemate for a bit, have a bit of an advantage in that regard, so we'll see how it goes, but right now I, I, I don't have an opening yet, I don't feel like. It's a priority. A five. A four. And this is where I say, have fun. Okay, yes. <laughs> no surprise. Uh, we'll jump into Sons of Bayamat, turn two. Not quite sure how to handle the timid Oryx, the Sons of Behemoth battle tactic is intimidate the invaders. Heroic leadership with King Broad, he fails it. More wild points, three up, oh, I get two. King Broad fails his chant for bless and suffers one mortal wound. Then he and his companions trudge across the battlefield, landing just a little bit closer to the Oryx horde. So this turn, I will pop my Morkside Pebble. My Morkside pebble. Yeah. Smash all bits first. Yes, four, one attack, yeah. uh, misses. After missing with the throne Wildwood, the Gatebreaker also misses with his boulder, though the second Gatebreaker connects and deals two damage to the Ragers. Sons of Man, turn two, and Mike, you smartly uh, gave away the turn, you used your cunning brain today, and put me in a position where if I go in, you're getting a clap back, potentially a double, and that could literally be game over. Um, you're generating wall points super fast. Again, said it earlier, I think this is gonna be a tough matchup. I'm scoring here, which is good. Tried to throw some rocks, didn't take any guys down. I was hoping to kill a few of the ragers just to kind of minimize your punch. Because we are close now, I had to kind of overextend for Intimidate the Invaders. Again, said that off the top too. Playing the battle tactic game, it's gonna be tough. And I was already like, well, I have to do Intimidate because yeah. I, I don't have others. Now maybe I could have set up to do like a lead into the maelstrom. Didn't feel like the right choice, maybe. There's a, a lot of a lot of meat over there, a lot of you know big green muscles. So we're not feeling too confident right now, but being patient, uh, not overextending, trying to be a little bit reserved, hoping that the, an opportunity presents itself throughout the game. Best we can do, I feel, so. Uh, in between the rounds, I did roll my uh, six for WA points. So I'm looking at that 18 WA points I'm sitting at right now. I was yeah. like, oh, okay, I just charge two units in. Hitting wounds on twos is pretty much everything. It was a good time. Yeah. Right now, I'm just looking at what battle tactics I have. Is it gonna be take that Yasukas and just wait yeah. and try to receive a charge afterwards? But yeah, I guess with that, we can just jump into big WA turn two. Yeah. As the Gargant threat creeps closer to their ranks, the Bigwa battle tactic is led into the maelstrom. A gatebreaker uses their finest hour, while the Wurgog prophet fails to generate any Wa points with here we go, here we go. I'm gonna put the elixir on him so he has plus one save. Okay, yep. Frenzy of violence will go on the, these two units here. More frost with the guy, it was an eight, nine. So Horfrost will go on the Brutes. I'm gonna put it on their big weapons, the hackers. They will hit on threes. 
The Wargog Prophet fails to cast Mystic Shield, though the Swamp Caller Shaman casts an Arcane Bolt and Choking Mist. I'm gonna drop it right in the middle of those three guys yep. so they can no longer run and are minus one attack. Sounds good. After the Brutes fail their charge with mighty destroyers, the Oruks steadily make their way closer to their foes, and the Wargog Prophet uses at the double. One War Channer uses All Right Get Em to charge on 3d6, then deals 5 damage to the Man Crusher in combat. Next, the Man Crusher deals 7 damage to the Gut Rippers, who deal just one mortal in return, then use Inspiring Presence. As the Oryx get in position for an epic clash, the Big Wa complete their battle tactic and score five points. All right, um, not the best turn for me, um, but I was able to um, make do, was, uh, make the best out of a bad situation. So um, I wasn't in a good position to get my monster killers in here. My hopes, were to get in close, stop the the roar, yeah. one of your roars or something, where you could stop my, like, just make me take a battle shock test, and then do the fights last on something, and then just commit into something else. But because I didn't roll the charges to those guys, I wasn't comfortable going in there. Although you're minus one attack, I would prefer not going when in. When you have multiple units, you really want to control the activation. Yes. So. Instead, I got my 3d6 charge here into this guy with uh, the War Chanter. So that's one hero in. Yep. Charge the Gut Rip is in. Didn't get too many in as the low charge is what I wanted. Yep. I just hope the War Chanter didn't spike, which he didn't. Yes, it didn't kill the Man Crusher. Yeah. Um, because a War Chanter can kill a Man Crusher. Because yeah. Could have thrown a wrench in your, in your battle tactic. Yeah. So I was able to hold that. Uh, I just inspired here to keep him around. And um, at this point, I'm kind of playing a little bit for the double, but it's expected. I positioned the Wurgog Prophet in just like yep. the scariest possible position. Let's see if he can have a staring contest with a, yes. gar a Gargant and just take him down. And um, yeah. yeah. Notable here, although you don't have 10 models on that objective, because of the mission where you count as extra for charging, yes. that actually allowed you to take that, that, yes. that point. If I, if I had to kill this guy, um, at that point, I would have had to. Moved other I would have had to throw in the brutes and just yeah. hope they live. Right now, it's coming down to really important priority. Yep. Yep. Um, Put luckily, it. if I win this priority, I have a battle tactic I get to do, which is very easy. It's called sneak up. And, and notable, <laughs> so that's the cool boys one where you just are near terrain. Uh, yeah. But. You were saying during the turn it wasn't possible because I threw this terrain away. Yeah, yeah. Your guys weren't able to yeah. do it. So, so that, that's what actually was a big thing of what made it hard for you battle tactic wise this turn. Yes. So prior uh, a one. See, a one as well. You break ties. I break ties. So um, at this point, I'll take the turn, Mike, and and try and get some damage out. Uh, well, again, this is like the little opportunity, mm -hmm. like we're in glimmer of hope. So. Yeah, we're gonna jump into Sons of Bayamat, turn three. As the Gargants relish the chance to retaliate, the Sons of Behemoth battle tactic is led into the Maelstrom. I'm gonna go Fire Sour on King Broad. <laughs> okay, let's do it. I will be Fi finest souring on my Sludger. King Broad chants for Pummel all to dust, granting an additional attack to each Gargant's main weapon. After the Gatebreaker moves close, the Brutes redeploy but move just two inches. This guy is going to smash it all to bits. Okay. Uh, yes. For D6 shots. Two. One hit. And threes. Yes. First one. Damage? Uh, D3 plus three for six. After connecting with the tower, the Gatebreaker throws his boulder and deals another four damage to the Brute Ragers. Yep, threes and twos run three, four damage, yep. The other Gatebreaker's gonna throw his hurled boulder there too. 
It's no. So I'll do the two man pressures at the brutes. Uh, this one. Oh, both the two yeah. in the back, right? Yeah, yeah. All right, I'm gonna all front the brutes. Um, so it's throwing rocks. There to be fours and threes. Um, one hits. Doesn't wound. While the last man crusher misses the war chanter, the gatebreakers and King Broad charge in, dealing ten mortals, three mortals, and seven mortals on impact, respectively. Got rippers first for three mortals, and then to the hero for two mortals, and then the other man crusher is getting in and dealing two more mortals. It's oh, one, one, one mortal right. there, sorry. Broad's just stomp the weird knob. Okay, take one. Okay. One gatebreaker is stopped from performing a monstrous action by the monster killer's tough grot to swallow, while a man crusher roars at the war chanter. Um, I will roar your gatebreaker here. Cool. Nope. I'm going to fight last your gatebreaker. Yes. So okay, Broad will do all of his hack. I'll do my death grip and my stomp on him. Rent three on the hammer. And rent the hammer's three. gonna go into the brutes. Is it gonna be rent three this turn or rent four this rent turn? Rent three this turn. Uh, so we'll go obelisk into the brutes. Uh, so twos and twos here. Uh, rent three, go five damage. Turn. Hits. Wounds, rent, rent two into the word dog. Two. For one damage. Takes one. The war chanter fights next and deals five damage to the wounded man crusher. Then a gatebreaker attacks and completely wipes out a unit of brute ragers. The gut rippers move in and finish off one man crusher, then deal two damage to another. I'll go into the war chanter. The war chanter? Yeah. One man crusher then deals two damage to the war chanter while a unit of gut rippers manage to deal three damage to a gatebreaker. Then another man crusher finishes off the war chanter. As the brutes pile in, the gatebreaker uses all out defense, but the brutes deal an impressive 28 damage. He's still alive with seven wounds left. All right. The sludge raker then attacks and finishes off the gatebreaker, dealing 18 mortal wounds of his own. Then one brute flees to battle shock. Sons of Bama, turn three was a good bloody turn here uh, on both sides though, unfortunately. As we saw, it went in, tried to do a bunch of uh, stuff. I actually expected you to try and slow King Broad down. As Soon as I saw four attacks and I know you need to kill yes. the Wergog Prophet. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he is too much of a liability. Broad does not have his ward now. What I had hoped to do, and again, smartly by you, I wanted to use the monster's action to redeploy this guy. So I didn't actually want to tangle with the Sludge Raker, yeah. but then you not only stopped him from doing that monster's action, you also made him fight last so he couldn't even like pile away to like get out of combat yeah. with the Sludge Raker. So that was like, went from like, ooh, I've got a cool trick here, possibly also jumping over and like, trying to finish off the word dog um, as he passes over. Mm -hmm. All those things, you know, the, their ability to kind of neutralize that play, like, you know, right in the middle or stop me from doing that. And mm -hmm. then obviously led to his death. So not the, not the best uh, outcome overall. I did do, I had a good turn though. Um, did a bunch of damage, killed a, you know, uh, a unit of your ragers, killed half your brutes and then a bunch of gut rippers, but I was hoping that like, then those units were all trying to be crippled to battle shock. But you rolled pretty good. Um, so only lost one brute between the three units, which it's not the end of the, like, was hoping for more, but you could have mm -hmm. lost four there. Yes, I could have lost a lot more yeah. brutes. You rolled two ones to wound, that minus one attack came in clutch. Oh my gosh, even, even, let alone, I could have just done more damage and then that more would work. Yes. I get, you know, another one of his attacks through and that's two more brutes dead. Yeah. And then two more fleeing, like, yeah. yeah. And then the slow Draker decided not to be a slouch and- Oh my a, gosh, he popped off. A, hum yeah. a humble 20 yeah. damage. <laughs> yeah, made, made the guardians and made me, uh, or punished me for my mistake. Again, I knew about the ability 
but I was expecting her to do it into Broad. And I was like, okay, Broad will be okay. I got a little over eager with his charge and put him into range where mm -hmm. I, I could have kept him back and been outside of the six inches and the play would have unfolded perfectly. So I wouldn't have minded if you did it to Broad at that point because Broad was relatively safe. He was finest hour and you're not getting that many brutes into him. So it would have felt much better there. Still could have done it all at defense. But yeah, trying to get it over eager with the charge to try to impact mortals everywhere ended up costing me. And what did I get out of it? Like I killed an extra brute maybe because of yeah. it. Mistake there for sure. And and I'm you know already paid the price, but we did we do control all the objectives actually right now. So we're we're trying to fight on the scoreboard, but again, you've got lots of damage still. A, a, yeah, uh, prio away from. Well, I get a turn now. Exactly, and, and but I mean, even <laughs> after that, like, still, yeah. that it's like could be game over with with a, a, a yeah. brutal. I'm still, uh, I'm still in an interesting predicament with my battle tactics right now. Yep. Um, because like, I have the possibility this turn to do say like uh, bait and trap, mm -hmm. retreat two, charge two, very doable. Um, the other option I do have right now is. Um, I take that Yasukas and kind of just like run away anyway. But if I'm gonna run away, I might as well charge with two units. Um, yes. yep. And then, so I'll probably end up doing a bait and trap this turn, keep my gut rippers alive. You do while you can, right? Yeah. Yeah, and I'll, I'll try to pick them up with the Ragers, cool. right? Um, the Ragers won't have the War Chanter buff, but the Brutes will. And that's a, a big one. Um, I'm gonna see how many WA points I get right now. Yeah, we'll jump into Big WA turn three. After maxing out their WA points, the Big WA battle tactic is bait and trap. The Swamp Caller Shaman casts Mystic Shield on the Sludge Raker and also gives him his poison, allowing the Sludge Raker to deal mortal wounds on fives. Not quite satisfied with his own contributions, the Swamp Caller then casts Choking Mist on King Broad and the Man Crushers, making a bold decision the Wurgog Prophet then aims his Wurgog Mask at King Broad. Eye laser, into Broad. Goes off. For one. Fails. I take six as it goes. I take three and die. <laughs> <laughs> no jackpot today. No. Heroic action will be, I will try to get a command point on my general, which I do not get. I'll do heroic leadership on King Broad, uh, failing. Yeah. War chant obviously goes on the brutes. Yep. I'm going to use one to mighty destroyers. Let's charge my ragers. They are going 13 <laughs> inches. Um, I'll charge um, monster killers. They are going eight inches. I'm going to roar broad. Yep. I will see if I can yep. stop his rampage. I do. Does he fight last? He does. In the combat phase, the Sludge Raker deals 23 damage to King Broad and triggers an onslaught of attacks. As the Brutes deal 27 damage, the Beast Killers deal 24, and the Ragers deal another 22 wounds. Cool. So how much damage did Broad take? 96? 96. Hey. So that was a fun turn. Yeah, um, yeah. I did really bad things to King Broad there. So Drake was just having a, a ball today. Yeah, you didn't stop when he went down. <laughs> no. <laughs> Uh, totaled up to 96 damage. Yeah, uh, not what, bad. Slow Draker did what, 22 this turn? Slow Draker did 23, yes. 23, yeah, yeah uh, up from last turn. Yeah. Um, then the monster kill has rolled an absolutely disgusting all the nine sixes with the Sludge Raker, yeah. Yeah, nine, nine sixes, so 18 yeah. mortal wounds. Yes, just... yeah, that was brutal. But the, the monster killers are really uh, shining this matchup. It's a monster matchup. Yes. But, but it shows was... the strength of that unit. 
135 I mean, points. That would have been that same amount of damage to anything else mm -hmm. just from their attacks. So if you think of them just in the, in the list for their attacks alone, they can hit way above their weight. Yeah. The monster stuff is like bonus. Yeah, so I would get three points this turn. I only have the one, I had to retreat here. Even if I did pile the monster killers on here, I would not be able to take it. You would be, yeah, just eight yeah. bodies would have been 16 on the charge. Yeah. The, the risky play, I wasn't sure how much damage I was gonna do to Broad. I wasn't sure if I was gonna make him strike last, but the risky play was actually throw the Ragers here. If I fight last Broad. Try to also take out the Man Crushers. Yes, and but, the, the, but it's, a, it's a risk because I'm throwing stuff into Broad. If I roll one, one, you back break my, you back break the, what's it called, the Sludge Raker or yeah. You... Not to mention a pile in, if you, like here you did a full surround, but if those brutes aren't there and I pile away three inches and you're getting less attacks in, that's huge too, yeah. right? So it was a, it's a guarantee kill. Um, I did one damage with the Wargog Prophet yeah. and then he has just exploded, it was his time. But I mean, he held King Broad and he didn't kill the brutes as a result. Yeah. So I'm happy for that. Luckily my brutes are in position to receive the War Chanter buff for next turn, yeah. which I will probably be throwing that on the Ragers because the Ragers have the highest chance yeah. of killing that guy. Yeah, well, Mike, <laughs> there's a, a priority roll. A six. Oh, I, you need a six. I need a six to take it. No, no, no home field advantage today. today. Not today. <laughs> so Mike, would you like to do it? Do the honors. Yeah, uh, let's go into turn. What? Yes, <laughs> big water turn four. With their WA points capped, the big WA choose and automatically achieve the battle tactic wait for it lads. The sludge raker then uses heroic leadership and also rallies one brute back to the battlefield, while the last remaining gatebreaker uses their finest hour. I will uh, cast choking mist again. It goes off with an eight. I'm gonna drop it behind your guy so he can no longer run and he's my okay. attack. I will pop fast in this turn to run my big guy over here. Then we go into the movement phase. So he will continue to move this way. Run my ragers. I will charge the Sludge Raker. He's going nine inches. The War Chanter uses the Get'em Beat on the Brutes, granting an additional D6 to their charge. The Monster Killers fail, bait, and trap, and the tough Grot to Swallow dies. Then one man crusher stomps the ragers while the other fails to roar the brutes. The brute ragers fight first and take down both man crushers, but the man crushers deal a combined 18 mortal wounds when they fall. Oh, 18 mortal wounds. Best output they've done all day. Yeah. Then after all the carnage, the brutes use inspiring presence. Interesting turn. Um, um, I did take what, 18 uh, mortal wounds from killing yeah. two gargants? Yes. They Turns did. out, don't surround Gargants, because no matter what, it's a bad time when they fall. I made, I beat you on both the timber rolls, yeah. and yeah, that was just rolled hot. I, I think it was still the right play. Um, so I knew after the start of my hero phase, Jordan has to use his finest hour. Yeah. I made him burn his last finest hour. I played against Gargants enough to know. Kind of do it turn by turn. Yeah, because they're. That's their thing is they'll always YOLO in or have the guy who's finest hour. It's, it's like the biggest thing for them is how well you can use your finest hour. Yeah. When he pops the finest hour there, cause I'm in the kill zone for killing his general, I just go to the other side of the table. Um, he can't run anymore, which is big for me. Um, and now I control three objectives. So this turn I'll get a one, two more. I couldn't guarantee a kill on him which I killed my Clutch of Grot, and I also- Yes, you rolled ones on those abilities. So, like you said it during the turn. Good you went for the safer yes. play, because you would have failed them there. Yes, because he would have gone and Could picked have... up a unit in yeah, retaliation. Yeah, and, and still defense. Yeah, like... and then things can go pear-shaped really quick. 
I don't need to fight him. Don't need to give me the opening. Yeah, I don't need to fight him. I still have another battle tactic. I have Intimidate open to me. Um, I have Surround. It's a little bit tricky for Surround right now, but it can do it. I only one turn left, so. Yeah, I just run them into the corner and run my Sludge Raker here. Um, but that or I do a Sneak Up or, you know, I have, or Intimidate and I just move in. Yeah. You got options. Yeah, so at this point, um, I'll get one, two more. Yep. And, and your battle tactic, so. Yeah, we'll uh, jump into uh, Sons of Bayam at turn four. Obviously not a lot left, so we'll be moving quick, but yeah, let's see what we can do. With only one Gargant still standing, the Sons of Behemoth battle tactic is good shot, her, her. The Gatebreaker fails heroic leadership, and the Swamp Caller Shaman uses their finest hour. Have to get within one of the train. I will redeploy my gut ripper. The Gatebreaker then prepares to hurl another piece of terrain in hopes of killing a unit to secure their battle tactic. Two up. Nope, fail battle tactic. Despite failing to throw the terrain, the Gatebreaker uses all out attack and hurls his boulder at the gut rippers, dealing four damage. I'm going to charge. No reason not to. You're in. We're angry. Mortals on impact for five. While killing the Gut Rippers was satisfying, the Gatebreaker wants more, piling into the War Chanter and also taking him out. Well, uh, Gatebreaker tried his best, but. Uh, he just wasn't feeling it. <laughs> he tried to lift up that building. He's just like, mm, huh. didn't want to hurt himself. Uh, so. Good thing you didn't take that grand strategy. I, I, I know. <laughs> Needed a two up, failed it here. It's going to happen at some point. Um, unfortunately, it was the turn that I chose that as my battle tactic. I had the option of going over here and taking this for two and scoring two points, but mm -hmm. I went for the three points. I am ahead. Um, maybe not anymore, but. It's a close game um, because I did have a points advantage coming into this turn. Yeah. But you've probably made up the deficit on this turn. I'm one point ahead at this point. Okay, exactly. So um, you have scored me four points this round. That's the big story. If I hadn't had two more, two point lead, not unfeasible for me to, like, if I went prior to be tied at the end of the game before Grand Strategies. Yeah. But uh, Mike will jump into priority. One. A two. Uh, so Sons of Amat are gonna take it. We have one more battle tactic available to us. So we'll jump into Sons of Amat, turn five. In a last ditch effort to punish the Oryx, the Sons of Behemat battle tactic is clear him out. The Gatebreaker then fails heroic leadership while the Sludge Raker succeeds and tries, but fails to rally back any more brutes. Just put myself three of both those units. I will redeploy my yeah. Rager, this is a free command point. Yeah. Four inches. Gatebreaker will use all of attack and shoot in. Okay. Uh, shoot at the Ragers for four damage. After charging in, the Gatebreaker deals four mortals to the Brutes but fails to roar. The Brutes attack the Gatebreaker, who uses all-out defense and only takes two damage. Then the Big Lad retaliates and finishes off the Brutes. Well, Sons of Bama, turn four, and you can see a decent turn here. Um, uh, three points ahead now. Again, think if I was... You could draw one, two, but yeah, not more. Not more. Now, yeah. that's the thing. It's like, if I had a last turn, I wanted a battle tactic that would allow me to take the objective and kill them, but I needed it to be near terrain. Um, so I couldn't have done that one because theoretically if I had done four points last turn, that would have been perfect. And then set me up to get five this turn. Would have been amazing. Now, still doing all right in story and all th things considered. Yeah. Um, got my battle tactic here uh, to charge and whatnot. You, you smartly redeployed the Ragers to put them in a spot where kind of you, it was hard to avoid them. But I managed to take one down in shooting which opened up a little gap, went mm -hmm. to the Brutes. Was forced to fight last, but survived, so 
That's yeah. all I need. To uh, the brutes weren't buffed or anything. Either. Yeah, so, uh, fair, fair. Wasn't too worried about it. Yep. Um, so you'll get clear them out. Yep. There's not really a way for me to take this objective back. I don't think you have what twenty on there. Yeah. Well, yeah. yeah. I don't need to. My turn. I auto run him there. Yeah. Run them with an eight of that, which they probably are eight inches away right now. It looks like. So and for clear them out, or no, sneak the, up, sneak up for so. <laughs> so on your turn, turn five. I just scored. run in there, sneak yeah. up. You got three put. objectives. Get your battle tactic. Five points. Get my grand strat. Yeah, they get your grand strat for a battle line in in my territory, yep. and I definitely didn't. Actually, they were they're probably the only battle line left. Oh, you have three gut rippers, right? Yeah. Yeah. So so very close, but. They're big in this matchup of both securing yeah. your battle tactic or grand strategy and denying mine. It's one of those things where like you just throw them in the corner and your opponent's like, well, now I have to deal well, with Well, especially like an army like mine, I chose not to. And you know, to my own detriment, but, yeah, but you I also probably didn't want to throw one man crusher into him or something. Yeah, yeah. It just with the way I positioned in deployment, I really wanted to get that battle tactic while I could, so. Maybe even hurling the terrain at him actually would have been good turn yeah, one. Yeah, you're not wrong. Yeah, I think I missed with it anyways, but... But, it, I but, mean, but throwing some shots over there to take them out would have yeah. been worthwhile. You start with some other little guys, yeah. you get them down low, and then you... Yeah. The only thing is like, I did have to start moving forward to be able to open up battle tactics. Mm -hmm. I don't like... I have decent tactics if the engagement happens, I can get charges off. Yeah. Stuff like that, I can throw, but... I think me not going after him that turn was really smart, because then... Oh, it, 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 it won you the game, right? Where you yeah. secured the game. Yeah. That you, that you were it, in control. It kind of means you can't really go for this one. And that one is just... I just have to fishbowl you at this point, yeah. essentially. And yeah. I'm in position to do that. That's why I kind of ran him over there. and made him like a don't kill him. Yes. So that he for, could just mow And the off. redeploy... Um, forced me into yeah. well, it would make it minus one to hit, so yeah, not minus worth one it. to hit, plus one to save from yeah. finest hour, minus another plus one yeah. from all sorts. Of, like, and the big rocket is not going to kill him in one go. It's just, do I stop the little ones, right? Yeah. So yeah, yeah. So I think it was actually I would have been too, think two ahead coming into your turn. Um, you scored five points, so you pulled two or three ahead, and then that six point or not six points, but you get three points for your grand strategy at the end. And I fail mine. Yeah, I, it's um, a fairly large swing at the end because I go up. It goes 20-25. Okay, so, so yeah, it's five point difference in the end. Yeah, but and which was um, like going into turn top of five for you. Yes, it was a one point difference in my favor. Yeah, so and I got the priority when it mattered, and I think uh, I was able to when you got into me. I was able to really slow halt your damage with yes. uh, monster killers. Again, that, that kind of interaction, that play aside, um, which was a mistake, cost me a gate breaker, went from a, a, you know, a clo close tough game to like putting me a step behind, which I can't afford to be. Yeah. But I think, in all honesty, Sons of Bam, Matt, all things considered, had a solid game. Oh yeah, no, I think Broad Stomp is legitimately a perfectly fine arm. Yeah, oh I, yeah, I think, I think it's... I think Balance, the only like, reason why you're not seeing it as much is I think people are a little bit bored of Gargants. Yeah. And there are trade-offs you do lose some stuff. Yeah, it's also a lot of people now have to go out and get they already everyone went out and bought their Gargant armies and yeah. they came out. Yeah, I think all in a, a definitely solid showing for Sons of Amat. But Mike, I think more exciting is talking about Big Wah. This was our first game with him on the channel. You've been playing with him quite a bit. Mm -hmm. Um I loved your list. And like you said, there's <laughs> a lot of you're used we're used to the staples of the uh, Mega Boss on Mock Crusher, yeah. you know, maybe a unit of Six Ragers, uh, different Iron Jaws pieces. Yeah, a lot of people take Gobsprack. Um, I really like Gobsprack, but I've been just trying out lists without him. Mm -hmm. um, and it's, you don't, I don't think you need him. Yeah. Um, it, there's like a really like interesting dynamic with like the character of Vastin. So a lot of people like take the Vulture because you just, you, yes. wait, you wait. You just keep him defensive. You run just away. Whip him, whip him for battle tactic yeah, or it's steal like, an objective. It was, he moves 14 inches in the hero phase, and then another 20. Yeah, <laughs> it's like it's a, he's gone, right? Yeah. yeah, it was cool though to see like your different, a little bit more synergy with uh, the cool boy stuff, mm -hmm. and and it really 
paying off with some big mortal wound output. Yeah, the Sludge Raker turns the Gut Ripper unit from a screen unit to a screen unit that you don't want to mess around with. And yeah. you're, you're a wound dense army. Um, you don't care so much about elite damage because your big things have so much wounds. Yes. That generally the high rend doesn't care. Um, but once you're dealing with say like gut rippers and they go into like a unit of mortis guard or something like that and you just roll a bunch of sixes. Yeah. All of a sudden it's like, I don't care if you're plus three to save. Yeah. Some good mortal output. Pick up yeah. your toys. <laughs> yeah. No. Good balance in the list for sure. Like having a little bit more of that, like the mortal wound output. The Sludge Raker was going off today. Yes, he did. But I, I think uh, this might have been the most damage I've seen him do throughout the course of a, a like a day. Jesus. 22 and 23 yeah. in, in the You roll the fives and sixes and it's just. Yeah. Yeah. No, very solid. Yeah. It was that, that, that triple six in the bronze. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Yeah. 12 mortal wounds just from the rider oh, and yeah. it's like oh man yeah that was a big moment but again yeah my uh good solid win here for the big wall solid army they have great battle tactics mm -hmm. you get plus one hidden wound kind of like early to mid game and that just like sends the unit to another or the yeah. army to another dimension yeah it's still squishy as we saw well, but it's the plus one to hit wound that is a big yeah. thing, right? And you just sit back, You and the fact that you can sit back, yeah. right? A lot of armies, you have to kind of like be a little bit more aggressive and you wind up over time like Doc. Yeah. Um, but I can just wait for my wind up, which happens faster than Doc, yes. and I can just sit back. It was awesome seeing them in action. So Mike, thanks for bringing him down. It was a no pleasure problem. getting the game in. Uh, guys, I hope you enjoyed uh, this battle tactic as well. Thank you so much for watching. We appreciate your support of the channel, and we'll see you soon in another video.